What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Ocarina of Time item randomizer. Version 5.0 finally hit the deck and we are finally ready to talk about how to get your new Ocarina of Time item randomizer experience through the web generator which is available on otrandomizer.com. My name is Tresker, I'm the admin of Zelda Speedruns and I'm more than happy to talk about the new changes to the web interface to you. If you are more interested in finding out what actually changed on a randomizer, please check out the video of Sakura Sabaza in the video description or on the website that will cover all the changes to the actual randomizer. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. What you will need to actually generate a ROM file of OTR is an actual Ocarina of Time N64 version 1.0 NTSC ROM file. This can be NTSC U, NTSC J. This is copyrighted material. So, please know, there's a big disclaimer here, we will not share these files. We cannot share these files, the item randomizer does not use or include any copyrighted material and we will not share any of this data. If you need to find it, you will need to find it yourself. Same goes for the OT 1.2 NTSC WAD file and we common key file that you will need to create a we virtual console version of this. Note, however. Our amazing Discord that by now has 35,000 viewers has a resource tab and this might help you finding not the ROM files or the common key or what files but maybe some hints how to get it. There's also a weird bot in here that might be able to help you and that's all I'm gonna say. Alright, back to what you will need. So. If you want to use the web generator, you will need a device with a somewhat modern CPU and at least 2 GB of available RAM, note RAM, not your hard drive space or phone space, RAM, um, at any given time. Ocarina of Time item randomization does require a compression process, which is somewhat hardware intensive, so this is a hard requirement. Don't try it on a phone that don't, it doesn't even have two gigabytes of RAM, it just won't work. Same for like old Chromebooks or something. That will not work and we're sorry that's not going to change. Um, for that you will just need to use the local version, which will be available in the description once it's available. On top you will need a modern browser. This means a modern browser on your de phone devices. Usually this is available wherever. Um, if you are on an actual PC or Mac, you will need at least Chrome version 69 plus, Firefox version 62 plus, plus the Chromium branch, so the new build of Microsoft Edge, Safari version 10 or later, the newer um, Opera versions work as well. This is all you need for generation. So if you want to play, you need one of the following. You can play on an N64 if you have an EverDrive. Note that you will need the N64 expansion pack. If you want to play on Wii Virtual Console, you need just a Wii file, an SD card, a Wii, an SD card, and a soft mod on your Wii, that's quite important. If you want to find out how to play this, please check out my version 4.0 video in the description, as this will cover the entire process of installing a VOD file on your Wii. If you can't play on either, you will have to play on emulator, and there are a multitude of N64 emulators. The most and well-known the most well-known, actually, is Project 64. We can absolutely not advise using that emulator, though, as it's a really hacky and not really stable emulator that maybe runs games fast, but absolutely not accurately, and it's also really, really, really in trouble if it needs to uh, interpret any kind of third-party code. So we heavily advise to use RetroArch or BizHawk, both really good emulators that will just do the job flawlessly if you set them up correctly. If you want to play on Wii Virtual Console, you will need an OT 1.2 NTSC WAV file on top and the Wii common key file. Same disclaimer as earlier, you will need to find this yourself. Alright, let's actually check out how this looks. So, welcome to the new website of the OTR item randomizer on otrandomizer.com. It just got a few changes, it looks a little bit different, nothing major here. Sakura's video can be found on the main page. You have a play now button and an about OTR button. In this case, we'll just go to the actual item randomizer and this is what you will be greeted with. 
So this is the new user interface. This new user interface will also be the user interface for your local version. It looks the same on both local version and web generator. The instructions tab for now we can ignore. If you need to brush up your information about generating a seed, just check it out. For now, I will cover all of this. And now we go right into it. So the first thing you will notice is this new field here, the plantomizer file. So what changed in OTR 5.0 is that you can actually plan out your own OTR seeds. There's no user interface for this for now, so what you will need to do is generate a file, a ROM file that potentially has your settings, the ones that you want, that's make, uh, that makes it a lot easier. And from there, just change the spoiler log. Just take the spoiler log and change all the information around. Change where items are, change the item pool, change if you have some starting items and where the prizes are and the hints and stuff. And if you did that, just use this file and upload it here and your Vavi custom OTR seed will be generated. This will get a user interface at some point. It's not ready for 4.0 release, however. All right. The web generator also has presets that you can load and even save after you did your very own settings. These get saved into the browser cache, so if you have that disabled, it will not work, else it will just load them from your browser cache on every single website load. There's two options down here instead of back in the day with two patches or two generation fields. We only have one now. Generate from seed is what you all set up here. Generate from file requires you to upload a patch file that you can grab uh, from the local um, release or from the dev builds or even from the discord where we have a marketplace that will show you all the information. All right. So let's go back, let's check out how the tabs look. On main rules we have a few uh, new settings that you can play with, like Cow Sanity, like Shuffle Magic Beans. Um, there's a few new things that just changed. Rainbow Bridge requirements uh, have not yet gotten a few new options that are still in the works. Ganon's boss key has a few new things that can now be changed and so on starting age and the most important and maybe biggest change of 5.0 entrance shuffle so not only can you change the item locations and have them randomized through the item randomizer you can also now change how your loading zones work if you enter a door if you enter a new area these will be changed if you enter a dungeon this might be a different dungeon so this adds a whole new layer of difficulty to your OTR seats if you want to play it. I already got the chance to play it and it was amazing. Um, you can also now randomize the main rules tab which will just give you random settings and make it a little more fun. On the detail logic tab you have the chance to actually disable locations that you don't want anything to have be on that's required for the seed. Um, note however that you don't just disable too many locations as this will just call the randomization and generation to fail since there's not enough locations left. There's a multitude of new tricks that you can actually add. You can see how it works here. Just select them and click the add button and same way the other way around. Really easy to use. Um, the other tab has a few new things and also there's you all love it. New cosmetics like UI colors, silver and golden gauntlets color, and so on. Randomizing buttons for the cosmetics are still here. SFX have not really changed a lot, but even here there's a randomize field that you can use. And these will just be pre-generation. These can be overwritten after ge the generation process. One small note about the two different generation modes here. General seed will just Generate your seed as you configured uh, it, just all your stuff that you want. Generate Ray seed, however, will not show the spoiler log, even if you created one. Hide it on the seed page and encrypt your ROM. You won't be able to open it in any weird way. There's no way to read it. It's encrypted and salted. And um, the spoiler log will be hidden. This is used for official races. And in that case, if it's used for official races, the spoiler log will be enabled and made visible after the race has concluded. All right, so we now will just take the current accessible weekly preset, load it and generate our seed. So the seed generation as before only takes around 10 seconds, 10 to 15. It's a quite a fast job, no big issue here. 
if the queue is uh, small because nobody's generating right now, it will go even faster. And that's already it. Welcome to the actual generation page. All right. So here, as before, you have your ROM hash, which is just a hash that's actually shown on the uh, save file menu as well. And this is meant to actually confirm that everybody in a race setting is playing the same seed. So you will see these five items in game and just be able to confirm that you have loaded the correct seed. This link right here is your actual seed link. Just copy that and share it with your friends for a race, share it on a race channel, share it in the marketplace of OTR if you found an amazing seed. This is just meant to make this a social experience or a competitive environment to, able, to be able to just share this and everybody will be able to generate their seeds off this page. All right, the spoiler log is actually parsed into the different locations here, different regions. You will see all the items that are there, the prizes you will see, and even information like how did the playthrough get calculated, so in what order are you supposed to actually start stuff. Um, And on top, there's information about the way of the hero, gossip stones, dungeons, if you have entrance randomizer, about the entrances, and so on. That's not important right now, however, because we want to actually generate a ROM. So here we are. You can save the unmodified patch file if you want to, but in most cases, you just want to generate your seed. So what you will need now is to actually enter your OTR ROM file, which I have prepared here. Again, we cannot share this, not in any kind of fashion. Then you can set your custom cosmetics if you want to. We will just, in this case, be brave and randomize everything. And then patch your ROM. This will be done locally on your device. Down here you see the generated settings while this is working. And this only takes like 7 to 10 seconds. It's not a big deal. And then it will automatically save your ROM file. This is all you need to do to actually play. We are already done. In our case, we'll also on top just quickly show how to generate a VOD file, so in this file you cl uh, click output type, VOD, and select your OT 1.2 NTSC VOD file, and your common key file, or if you have it manually and written out, enter the 32 character string for word encryption. We cannot give this to you, you will have to find it yourself. We click patch ROM again, and now it will create the ROM that we just did before, and then actually inject it into a V virtual console. Uh, VOD file, which means we can actually play on Wii Virtual Console. Again, if you want to learn how to do this, please refer to my 4.0 video. This will cover all the details. <clears throat> Moving on, we're actually done now. So let's go to my beloved tutorial screen and talk about what we need to do here. So here's my um, directory where I actually saved stuff to to what we will need to play this game in this case is mm, an emulator because we're on PC, right? So let's get RetroArch. So back to the browser and let's actually go to RetroArch.com which is just the website of one of the most common and well-known emulator frontend. It's not an emulator itself, it's just a frontend for a multitude of emulators, game engines and so on. So we click Get RetroArch and in this case, since we are on Windows, we can just download Stable. Down here is a multitude of platforms from Windows over Xbox One, Apple, to PSP and even Nintendo Switch. It's even available in a web browser by now, by now, although I'm not sure how stable it is. For now, we can only support the Windows versions. Maybe we can talk about a few others, but our support staff, our amazing team is only able to really help with the Windows build. So we download Stable in this case, and we would save if I didn't already. In this case, I don't need to download it. And we go back to our folder, and now we'd install it. So we install RetroArch, <clears throat> and we click Next. The terms and the license agreement can be accepted. We select where we want to save it, and now we'd install it if I want to. In this case, I don't really need to. You just install and that's it. So afterwards, you have RetroArch available and ready. And that's where we just started, and then we go to this here. So welcome to RetroArch, this is RetroArch, the emulator frontend. If you do this for the first time, since it's only frontend, you need to load a core, so actually an emulator file that will be able to play certain games. So in this case we go to load core, and we click download a core, and now we go to this index, this huge index of game machines and platforms that RetroArch supports. In our case, we want the N64. We have two options here, Moopin64+, Next, and Parallel N64. 
both just work perfectly fine with OTR, it's personal preference. I, in my case, will usually take parallel. In this case, I will just download Movement 64 Plus by hitting enter and now it's already done. One setting needs to be changed if you want to play OTR and that's on the configuration settings on under saving and there's the save ramp auto save interval. This is usually set to off and we want this to be set to 10 seconds. This, this is quite important to prevent certain problems with the randomizer. There's a few more settings you can do like changing your default directories or even if you want to do this um, in general change your joypad binds but we'll actually do that after loading the RAM file. So all we need to do now is go to load content, go to our folder where we actually have what we need which is in this case our Z64 ROM file of OTR and then just hit enter. We select now the core, usually we only have one, I have both now, so we just select Movement 64 Plus, which I just downloaded. And after a quick load, hopefully after a quick load, okay. <laughs> or maybe not, because RetroArch just decided to crap itself. <clears throat> I guess this can happen for myself, I've never happened it before. This is part of a tutorial now, I guess. We'll just do it again and select Parallel instead. Both work just fine usually. I don't know what happened in this case. Parallel would work just fine. And here you are. Um, so this is your OTR item randomizer now. Since I qui I just have in-game music, I will quickly mute something so you can hear that this is actually randomized. You can also see that Link has not his vanilla uh, tuning color, so it actually worked. So we'll see the nice and great OTR random uh, OD OT randomizer intro logo and we go over and you can see the hash that you saw on the website so if I quickly go over to the browser again you will actually see that we have the same seed hash here same icons congratulations you now have your own OTR ROM file and that's all you need to know if you want to play OTR you're already there for now we want to go back to the browser though, because there's one more thing we need to talk about. And this is multi-world. So, OTR actually comes with a multi-world mode, which is a script that TestRunner wrote. It only works, for now only works, with the emulator BizHawk. This is due to the reason that this loses, uses Lua scripting, and Lua scripting, for now, only works on BizHawk. So, there's a bit of information here. If you click this link, you will get to his uh, GitHub repository and we'll find information about how to set it up. So basically what this is, you set a player account, which is just the amount of players that will participate in your multi-world action. Every player will play in his, his very own world of OTR. You will not be able to see yourself, but you will play alongside in every in your own world. And the items in the entire seed are mixed across all worlds. So you and your world one can find the items for player two, three and four and vice versa. And the Bizarre co-op script will actually synchronize your progress and send all the items over to the other players. This is quite amazing. So if you generate a seed, note that this takes a lot longer. We just do it in this case. Multi-world takes a little longer. Um, especially if you do high world counts, it can take over 20 minutes, that's just how it works, because multi-world is really complex. In our case, we only did two worlds, so it only takes a little bit. And um, in this case, all you need to do is say, share this link with your mates, and then everyone needs to select a player ID. So remember, if you're player 1, you select player ID 1, if you're player 2, you select player ID 2, and so on. Then you use Bizlock to connect and that's all she wrote. Alright, I wish all of you amazing fun with OTR version 5.0. I hope you have a blast. Check out Sakua's video, check out our Discord in the description. My name is Tresco, I hope this is helpful. Good luck, enjoy OTR.